the independence of Nigeria in 1960. Conditions in Nigeria have resulted in the emigration of an ever swelling stream of educated Yoruba to various parts of the world. It is probable that over 4 million of such Yoruba immigrants have made their homes in countries of the Western world, in the United Kingdom, United States, Canada, and some countries of continental Europe, including Asia. In each country where they are settled, Yoruba immigrants constitute a highly educated immigrant citizenry. Because of the growing expansion of Yoruba cultural influence in the Americas, educated Yoruba people in homeland Yoruba land in West Africa tend to identify more with the Black peoples of the Americas than do any other indigenous African people. The Yoruba elite in Nigeria now commonly claim that the total population of Yoruba people plus Yoruba descendants worldwide is close to 200 million. The idea of a transatlantic Yoruba nation is growing in the Americas, a transatlantic Yoruba nation. And it seems likely to become a significant factor in world affairs. Soon, when the immediate pastor on of Ife, Oba Kwade Shujade, visited the United States, he was received everywhere by enormous crowds of people, of Yoruba people and Yoruba descendants. And many citizens of Brazil and Cuba frequently asked him when he would come to take them back home to their Yoruba homeland. The early Aldudua Republic is pulled out of the sinking ship called Nigeria, the safer and better for all of us as Omoluadi or Mudua. It is only then that the potential presented by our massive local and diaspora population, our humongous natural and intellectual resources, and our unique geography can be fully realized. It may be difficult and daunting initially, but nothing worth having comes easy. We must note that we were never conquered by the British. What we signed with them were treaties of trade and cooperation, not treaties of conquest and subjugation. Now that the Fulani have openly declared war on us, we must meet this unconventional asymmetric war in the language they have chosen to prosecute it brutal, merciless, and lawless. However, we must rise above their barbarism and carnivorous cannibalism by employing technology and artificial intelligence. These are areas where we are inherently far superior to them. However we fight this war, it must be swift, it must be sudden and decisive in our favor. Do not forget the days of your youth. Your language and culture are captured in the history of your origin. The youth of a nation is its strength. If your youth are spineless, cowardly, and directionless, the enemy will walk you over with ease. They will crush your men and rape your women. They will possess your farms and your villages. They will rule over your towns and cities. May God forbid this. However, if our youth stand firm and are indomitable, the enemy will be crushed even before they get to our city gates. They will be annihilated on the roads and on the highways. They will be incinerated in their strongholds. To achieve this, the brashness, arrogance, and daring of youth must be supplemented with regimented training, controlled exposure, and the scientifically inquisitive mind. We must substitute our priorities with new ones. Frivolities and parties must give way to discipline and focus. This existential threat faced by the Yoruba must be confronted head on by all, especially the youth. Because you have more tomorrows to reap the harvest of this land than those far advanced in years than you. After we have read our land of the invaders or Paripasu, we must vacate Nigeria. The same way we have we have external enemies, we only have detractors within. And when you are tongue body, tongue in bebodje, kunule. I came across an article online recently. It was written by a member of the retired Yoruba Progressive Officers Group. I shall copiously quote from it to drive home some points. He wrote, for now, there is no credible leadership, political leadership in Yoruba land. Our fatherland is empty. The recent developments in Yoruba land have shown clearly that there is no political leadership. From head to toe, Yoruba land is manned by self-serving crooks common criminals and VIPs, vagabonds in power. He said he wants to cite some clear examples. Number one, the bomb explosion in the battle. No single senator or House of Representatives member, 
visited the victim. No, no state governor outside your state governor did. No one had been arrested. When Kaduna was bombed, 13 emirs, all northern governors, senators and House of Representatives members visited. Northern senators don donated their salaries. Northern governors gave 45 million. The Sultan of Sokoto spoke. Number two, he said prominent, two prominent Yoruba bars were killed by Fulani. Only a few of us in the Kiti visited. No senator has a representative member from anywhere in Yoruba land visited the community. Even the senator and house of rep, and house of representative members for, for the area have not even visited. One wrote in Miyaki who represents, you know, a particular area was crying crocodile tears. Let him give two million out of the out of the 10 million monthly salary that he collects every month. Foolish rook. No minister from Yoruba land has visited. Not even Alake, who is from, that is Dili Alake, who is from Ikiti State. What evidence do you have, do you need to know that our political office holders are all an irresponsible bunch? Three, a prominent, a prominent Yoruba Oba was killed in Kwara State a retired general. No statement from Yoruba Obas condemning the killing. Yoruba senators, retired generals have said nothing. He was one of them. No Yoruba state governor has visited Koro Ikiti in Kwara State to commiserate. They are not even talking. Shameful. In Tinubu's cabinet, no single one is committed to Yoruba values. They are not for, they are, they are not for Yoruba. Let us understand that. They are for themselves. The Minister of the Interior, Olubumi Tujiojo, is alleged to have forged the secondary school and NYSE certificates. If the Nubu is wise, should he not have visited the scene of violent crimes in his motherland? When houses were killed at Ileife, the then Minister of Interior, Dambazao, visited the fair. That is leadership. This weekend, many of these Yoruba political leaders will be in Owambe parties dancing away. Che Ijolo Konsin. After the Kaduna bombing, the, the Northern leaders provided huge funds for their social groups to organize Northern Security Summit. At the summit, the federal government gave 50 billion to assist some, some several states provide the essentials of life for their people. Can you see? It is either we crush these so-called elected Yoruba leaders individually or collectively, or we are all doomed. Therefore, we must organize. We must regroup, and you, as youths, must compartmentalize your competencies into workable synergies in education, in health, technology, aviation, robotics, artificial intelligence, agriculture, arts and culture, tourism, town and country planning, etc. You must attain the utmost, challenge the improbable, dare the impossible, climb the highest mountain, and conquer your fears. You must be unassailable, indomitable, and unconquerable. The launching of this website today is another formidable step in that direction. Thank you all. Eshe Mudupe. Eshe Gonida. Eshe Gonida, God bless you, sir.